Uh, good, morning. good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for being here to worship. Um, just a couple things before we start. First of all, I want to remind you that there are cords on the ground up here, which makes this kind of a dangerous area to be in. I'm hoping that I don't prove that sometime during the course of the service. But um, in any event, please be careful. We, we left flag near the board, um, but it's it's been that way every week. We just kind of feel like there's more than normal. I'm not sure how that would be. But the next thing I'll say is that um, we are uh, we have a tentative plan for moving inside when it gets cold. The um, our regathering team has put in a lot of work and have submitted to me uh, plans to go in. I'm going to read through them. I saw the drafts. I think I think we're going to be in good shape. Uh, we, to start out, probably will not have more than about 30 people in at a time. And we've been doing 50 to 60 here, so you might get to go every other week if you want to go inside. My guess is not as many people are going to want to be inside as want to be here. But we will rotate everyone through as best we can. Um, I won't go into a lot more detail about that, but we're going to put it off as long as we can. We hope to get through October outside. I have been reminded that uh, people, many of whom uh, uh, go to this church, might be willing to go to, say, an outdoor event for three and a half hours in late December. <laughs> say sports, for example. And... So uh, so we hope that you will be willing to wear a jacket, maybe even some gloves and a hat, and come on out and worship God with us. So uh, with that, I'm going to invite Ian and Charlie. When first love came to earth, all upon a cross they found thee, and mark thy saving kingship then by thorns with which they crowned thee. Thank you. 
Worshiping here for very long with me knows that periodically I forget something, and I forgot a very important thing. I want to uh, uh, introduce to you all Connie Bowen. If you were on our Zoom worship last week, you met her virtually. Connie is an intern. She is um, discerning uh, a call to ordain ministry, and she will be with us until early February. So you will see her doing various and sundry things. Uh, we've separated her up here. Normally in the church, I would have her vested and sitting up front with me, and um, obviously this is different, so, but welcome, and it's great to have you, and I'm sorry I neglected to introduce you first. Thank you all for your patience with me. And now please stand as you are able. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscious, conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading of the book of Exodus. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the God will not for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your, na your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When all the people witnessed the thunder and the lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain smoking, they were afraid and trembled and stood at a distance and said to Moses, you speak to us and we listen, 
But do not let God speak to us, or we will die. Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid, for God has come only to test you and to put the fear of him upon you so that you do not sin. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able for the proclamation of the gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There is a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a fence around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he leased it to tenants and went to another country. When the harvest time had come, he sent his slaves to the tenants to collect his fruits. But the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves, more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and get his inheritance. So they seized him, threw him out of the vineyard, and killed him. Now when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to, wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the harvest time. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that produces the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they realized that he was speaking about them. They wanted to arrest them, arrest him, but they feared the crowds because they regarded him as a prophet. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. You may be seated. Good morning. Good morning. I am way out of my comfort zone here. Just a million miles. But here we go. There's much that could be said about today's Gospel from Matthew, today's parable. It's a parable that Jesus's audience would have understood because the economic arrangement was so familiar. However, there's also a dark and violent piece to this parable because in some ways it's a parable of judgment. It's the second of three parables Jesus tells on his way to Jerusalem. And it's the centerpiece of his threefold response to the religious leaders who have questioned his authority. Jesus has set his face toward Jerusalem and all that awaits him. So there's not a minute to waste as he continues to reveal his true identity, his mission, and provide yet another glimpse of the true nature of God. Now the image of the vineyard in the history of Israel could be another topic for another day. It's an image that appears throughout the Old Testament and cannot be disconnected from the promise of land and the promise of fruitfulness made to Abraham in Genesis, culminating in the arrival of Israel in the promised land after 40 years of desert life. Vineyards became an important part of the economic life of Israel, and it was a reminder to Israel of their obligations to be a, gener to be a nation of generosity and peace. It was not their land because it had been given to them by God. They were to be the caretakers, the stewards. Today's parable tells us that by the time of Jesus, the religious leaders had abandoned this idea and would choose violence as the way to maintain control of the vineyard. So, lots more could be said about the parable. 
Some commentators say it's very much an allegory. So we could spend time discussing the basic structure and arc of the story. There are the tenants who kill everyone, including the son, that are sent by the owner to collect the harvest. We could even match up each character with figures, even in the ancient world. We can see the owner of the vineyard as God. Slaves most likely stand in for the various prophets throughout Israel's history. Jesus himself is most easily recognized as the son of the owner, and the tenants as the notorious Pharisees and chief priests. But one part of the story at this point is worth noting and thinking about. Jesus does not finish the parable, at least not in this particular setting. He sets up the entire stories for his listeners without providing an ending. Instead, he basically ends their, the parable he's telling them by asking a question of his audience. And his audience, remember, are the chief priests and the Pharisees. Now, Jesus says, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to these wicked tenants? Filled with a sense of justice and a good measure of vengeance, his listeners respond. Well, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at harvest time. If you kill the owner's messengers, if you kill the owner's son, well, what else can you expect to reap in the end? This is an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth world. They think when it comes to God, justice will be served even if it is a long time coming. The very religious leaders that plot Jesus's crucifixion name what will happen to those who reject God's messengers and God's son. The vineyard will not be destroyed, but it will be handed over to new tenants. Is Jesus looking for a fight? I don't think so. Is he trying to exclude the chief priests and Pharisees from the kingdom of God? I don't think that's necessarily true either. In fact, I think this parable tells us that Jesus is never willing to give up on anyone. Like the landowner who keeps sending his agents to collect the harvest, God is always willing to pursue us, to confront us with the truth about our lives as stewards of the vineyard, the kingdom, God's vineyard, God's kingdom. This, not, this is not a parable designed to condemn or cast out, but to remind us that we are not the owner of the vineyard, but simply the stewards. Those to whom the vineyard have been given have failed to produce and share in the fruits of the kingdom. So Jesus says, the kingdom will be given to other tenants, to those who are already producing fruit. This is not a reward, but a recognition of what already is. Because where the fruit is, there also is the kingdom. Keeping the kingdom to ourselves, excluding those we think are not worthy of the kingdom, or don't have the right pedigree, or skills, or status, or gender, is a sign that we are not the stewards God expects and requires of us. That Jesus still came and comes to those he knew would reject him, is the most amazing and life-giving message contained in this parable that begins with violence. Despite our rejection, our complicity, our failings, our harsh judgments, and yes, many times our violent ways. In other words, despite all that we are, Jesus comes to us. He is always with us and for us. Jesus will ultimately finish the parable when he bursts through the tomb and rises from the grave. This is the answer to the question. When the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? And the answers, he will forgive, we will be recipients of grace, we will experience resurrection, we will always have access to new life, and the chance to begin again and again and again. Please stand as you are able. And let us
us together proclaim our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we remember our shared ministry with the Worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray today uh, the Anglican Cycle of Prayer, praying especially for the Anglican Church of Tanzania. As we remember that we are part of the Episcopal Diocese of Maryland, we pray the Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, praying today especially for St. Luke's Brownsville, St. Mark's Lapins, and St. Paul's Sharpsburg. In the prayers of this parish family, we pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Nancy and those celebrating wedding anniversaries. We offer prayers of intercession for Peter, Gabriella, Tanya, Steve and Elaine, Kimberly, Charlene, Ed Lou and family, Tony, Heather, Abby, Diana, Christina, and Donald. We offer prayers of thanksgiving. We offer prayers of thanksgiving for the joy of our pets. And we offer prayers for the repose of the souls of Jess, Mitch, Ellen, Warren, and Ruth. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. And we also promise to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I will conclude the prayers this morning with the 
prayer for our country. Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech you that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of your favor and glad to do your will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure manners. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people, the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues. And do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in your name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to your law we may show forth your praise among the nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness. And in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust in you to fail. All which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all, our, all your sins for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Before the peace, I would like to invite everybody who has a birthday or anniversary in October to come forward so that we can say a prayer on your behalf. You're not going to be alone, Earl. Uh, <laughs> they're, they're coming. That prayer is in the middle of page four. Praying together. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace, and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, everyone. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Peace. Peace, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice oh, no. to God. No, no, I'll put it back there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan River, chilly and cold, 
Till the body, but not the soul. There ain't but one train runs this track, runs to heaven and runs right back. Every time I feel the spirit going in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the spirit going in my heart, I will pray. stand as you are able. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give His thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Holy Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God is power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord, suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given to you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. I would like to invite those who are with us digitally, who cannot be with us uh, physically, uh, to join me in praying a prayer for spiritual communion. In you, Lord, in union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. And since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Christ and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in life to come. Amen. Amen. The gifts of God to the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed in him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Don Jones said, I mean, Donna, I think, said it took a couple of years. together and say the post communion prayer. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enable us, your Holy Father, revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, Bear good news, news, seek justice, rest, rest and grow in the spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in, in hope and prayer, and send us in confirmation that, that we and the whole creation might be renewed and restored. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in knowledge and love of God. And of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, and be with you always. Amen. You can sit if you'd like, but it's going to be less than a minute, I think. I don't want to spend a lot of time on announcements, um, but I want to say that for those of you who can't be with us uh, personally, we are going to do drive-up communion uh, until noon, but I'll have to leave immediately at noon to get home by 12.30 for the Blessing of the Pets, which will be uh, virtual this year. Um, as I noted in the email I sent out, you might want to come on Zoom with your phone. I know that our dog will not sit peacefully, but um, in front of the computer. So I think it's going to be um, a nice little venture. And uh, I'm sorry that it's not in person, but for reasons I'm not going to go into, that just wasn't going to work. So um, we will have a lovely video for those of you who sent pictures of your pets. And now let us bless the Lord.
Mira. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Yeah.